All right, good afternoon. Uh, so today we're going to talk about the performance-based contract that we have on I-45. Uh, the current contract we have, we're, we're uh, about a year into it. Uh, it's our second contract on I-45. The first one uh, was with a company called Texas Sterling. It, it ran its two-year course, and uh, we, we wanted to have another contract. We just needed to correct a few items with that was involved in the in the first one. It was a joint contract with uh, part of the Dallas district, and uh, Dallas wasn't going to pursue another contract for that section of roadway, and so we had to we had to renew we had to get a new contract to kind of cover all the gaps. So um, I'm going to talk about just the general stats in the contract. We'll talk about the work items and some information that's in the contract itself about how the contractors kind of achieve some of the goals. Um, We'll go over kind of the monthly assessment, which is kind of the core part of how our contract works, is our monthly assessment and, and how we evaluate our contractor's work. Uh, from there, I'm just going to talk about what, we, what we've noticed as the benefits and then what we're looking at as kind of issues we've had to work through. Uh, nothing that's made, uh, you know, make or break, just things that we've had to take from, you know, sit down with our contractor and kind of iron out the small details of how we were going to work through some items, given what we had in our contract to work with. Uh, so this contract, it's an RMC contract. It was awarded in uh, May for just under $9 million. We actually have four bidders. The high bid was around 19, uh, so it's a pretty good bargain. Uh, work started in July, and the contractor's Roy, Jorg Roy Jorgensen and Associates, RJA. It's a three-year contract with uh, option to extend an, up to an additional three years, and we're 15 months in. And I want to recognize Joe Sego. I think he's yeah, he's here in the audience. Joe, we, uh, we we dumped the management of this contract on him. Our first contract was was run by the maintenance division, and so it was kind of a kind of a hands off approach until the last few months of that contract. And so then when this one came on board, uh, Joe had just joined the area office as a construction engineer, project manager, and and uh, we just we kind of gave this to him and said, here, work you know figure it out. And uh, for the last year, he's done a real good job figuring it out and working through a lot of details and making it run real smooth. So if you have any specific questions about how we're doing things, Joe Segoe's the man. <laughs> uh, limits of the contract, it runs from Montgomery Walker County line north to the Freestone Navarro County line. It's 112 uh, main lane miles. I-45, if you're not familiar, our section of it is a rural interstate. So it's just uh, four lane divided. Uh, interstate, very limited access as a rural interstate. Uh, now we have a uh, uh, discontinuous frontage road system, so we've got, we have a frontage road that runs from north to south. Sometimes it's on the east side, sometimes it's on the west side, sometimes it's on both sides. So there's about 139 miles of frontage road that the contractor also has to maintain. And it's a, uh, all, in most cases, it's a two-way frontage road. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. So the primary work item is routine maintenance of highways. And in that contract, it's a, you know, it starts off with a simple paragraph and then it gets really long in detail. And so that covers a lot of the items that are listed. So the routine pavement maintenance, it covers pothole repair, patching, uh, uh, spot base repair, uh, level up, uh, maintaining edges. It's just a very broad general scope. This is how we're going to do all that. And the contract has 25,000 square foot of uh, maintenance for ro roadway maintenance that's prescribed in the, in the plan. So that's 25,000 square foot per year. And then anything above that amount, you know, we, we pay for outside of the contract. Uh, it covers cleaning and sweeping, vegetation management. That's our herbicide program and a mowing program, uh, tree and brush control, maintenance of drainage, litter and debris removal. Uh, this one, debris removal especially. So when the contract first started, uh, RJA was actually a subcontractor to Texas Sterling on the very first contract we had, so they're very familiar with the roadway. And anecdotally, they said, okay, since we started this, you know, three years ago, we went from running uh, one litter debris crew a week, just running up and down 45, picking up tire rubber and everything, to where he runs a crew every day. And they pretty much are picking up tire rubber uh, in, you know, minor garbage, but it's primarily focused on uh, the, the tire rubber from trucks. We have a large truck percentage on 45. And he's running that every day to keep up and make sure this doesn't become a problem. Uh, traffic operation device maintenance, that covers signs, large sign, guard signs, small signs, 
That covers uh, uh, signals, it covers illumination, it covers delineation markings, everything that's out there underneath that operation device maintenance. And one of the things we learned from our first contract and we added to this one was a, is in a general note and it basically says that uh, Bryan District traffic maintenance or traffic operations personnel can advise the contractor. <clears throat> and what, what came from that was on the first contract it was, it was just them. They were supposed to take care of it. Hire a sub, hire somebody, an expert to come out there and fix whatever problem they had. And the issue they had with that is they, the contractors were installers. They weren't troubleshooters. And so they would you know, open up a cabinet and they didn't really, they could tell you if something was broken and visible, they go, oh yeah, we can fix this. And they could replace parts. But they didn't know the system and they didn't know how we ran our systems and how to, how to you know, tweak it and troubleshoot it and find out what the real problem was in a, in a timely manner. And so that was a change we made so we can, they can call our district folks to come over. The, they know the system a little better and they can help them troubleshoot and track that problem and then they'll get it fixed for us. So that was, that was a big change and, and it's really helped out a lot. Um, so the next big item is uh, snow and ice removal. So the plans to find the, uh, the season for snow and ice removal is December to March. And then it lists a bunch of caveats. One is all the de-icing material, whether it's brine or, or uh, 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 aggregate, will be uh, supplied by the department. And then it lists everything the contractor is supposed to provide on a call out, and these are maximum numbers. So they brought a maximum of eight 10-yard trucks with, with a V-Box spreader, maximum of three 1,200-gallon brine trucks, uh, motor graders, replacement braids, and then all the associated equipment. So they're supposed to provide a light tower at the, at the yard so they can do all the loading and, and unloading of material. They're supposed to provide the, all the uh, labor and everything associated with that. We, uh, as far as the uh, contract goes, when December, March hit, we kind of, we have an item, we pay a, a standby cost for them to maintain all that equipment at their, at their yard. Uh, our contractor has two, we have four counties, runs north to south, uh, Madison, let's see, it's uh, Walker, Le uh, Madison, Leon, and, and Freestone County, so they actually have two yards, one in Huntsville in Walker County, and uh, one is up, I believe it's up in Buffalo, uh, a smaller yard that they have up there, and that's where they maintain a lot of their equipment. And uh, so we pay, kind of a standby cost for those months, and then if we actually do a call out, then we'll pay that call out, you know, that cost associated with that item. In addition, uh, the, the department decides what equipment gets called out. That's what we've done in the past. We work with the director of maintenance operations to figure out what equipment we need from the contractor, and we make that request, kind of let them know ahead of time, especially if we, if we have uh, any issues with uh, freezing temperatures or possibility of freezing roadways. And uh, let's see. Da, da, da. So, get into the uh, assessment. So, prior to the contract going active, there was a baseline assessment that was run. This was kind of a February of 2016. Uh, it was run by the maintenance division. Uh, they they kind of set the standard for the contract, uh, where everything was at, and that's what the contractor, in a sense, this is what he's got to shoot for, and anything better than that you know, that's good for us. Uh, the assessment tool, again, it's an Excel spreadsheet-based tool. Uh, maintenance division supplied that to us. It has, uh, basically what it does for us is it selects the random roadways that we're gonna inspect. So on a monthly basis, we have a team that goes out. It's a three-person team. Made up, right now it's made up of two maintenance supervisors and another assistant area engineer from out of our area and uh, they run 10% of the lane miles. So they'll run one mile segments, it's randomly selected by the tool that was created, and they'll also do 10% of the bridges, and that's also randomly selected by this, by this spreadsheet tool. And uh, they'll go through and assess the roadway. The assessment actually kind of follows the text map guidelines, there's a little bit of tweaks here and there. And uh, contractors contractor's allowed to sit in the truck, company us. He has, uh, uh, he's done it numerous times. Contractor provides a TMA for the uh, assessment team for, for uh, safety purposes. And it's been a really good process so far. We've, we've uh, the assessment team and the, and the contractor, they talk about the issues and what they're seeing. They don't discuss or debate what's out there. They're just out there driving and riding. That's not the assessment team's job to uh, 
have a conversation with the contractor about anything, that's the area office, that's, that's the Huntsville area office's job is to have that conversation. So we have them go out and just assess it based on what they've been trained to assess. They don't make any conclusions or, or, or you know, give any kind of considerations, just what they see. And the contractor and, and the area office then get together later and, and we'll have that any discussions about, okay, why is it this, why is that, you know, uh, what's going on with the, with the herbicide program or anything that's, that's, that's uh, in questions or concerns. Uh, this is kind of a snippet of the scoring system that uh, the assessment team uses. So for failures, it's the same, you know, rating system of one to five with five being perfect, three being, you know, kind of the expectation. This is uh, for bridges and culverts again. So like looking at bridge joints, like new with no damage or joint may cause a safety problem more than half inch uh, uh, debris. So things that we're looking at there. Uh, this is a snapshot from the assessment tool, and this is what the assessment team has in their hands to uh, when they're on the road and they're driving. And so the top part there is showing you the mile section of main lane that they're going to look at. And it gives the direction northbound, southbound. They're looking at both directions, and this is all tied to those same assessment score sheet categories, and they're making their assessment scores. So. You know, they scored a five, a four, a five, a five, and so on. They made a comment. There's a drop-down box about what are, you, what, are you, what are you seeing or was there a comment that you can put in there. Uh, the bottom half is showing bridges. Again, it's all tied to the same assessment sheet, identifies the location, and they're scoring it based on, on those values. The red one there is uh, it was selected, but it's blocked out. And what that is is that area is under construction. So we've got an I-45 reconstruction contract going on in South Walker County. That's about six miles of interstate that we have blocked out of the uh, assessment tool. And it's not, it's not an automatic. We have to go in and uh, main, maintenance division gives us a hand and we tell, okay, we need to block out from A to B and they take care of that. But then it allows us to make sure that those, those portions aren't included necessarily. They're included as part of the 10%. It's kind of a freebie saying, okay, this was under construction, so we don't count that. Uh, this is uh, kind of the results of the assessment. It's all part of the same uh, program. So this gives, it takes the assessment scores, runs them through the algorithms provided by the maintenance division, and gives an element score. And so what you're seeing there is the baseline element score from February 2016 the element score from that month based on the random sampling and the percent change. And then if anything falls below the baseline, then it, there's a, a calculation that goes with a deduction to the monthly uh, payment that occurs. And that should be the next one. So you would see that if there's any reduction, re reduction or penalty payments based on a poor assessment of uh, say bridge drains or any other element, then that would show up here and it'd be identified. And then this is a, a sheet that we send to the contractor. Uh, he signs it, we sign it, it goes into the record. So some of the, the benefits that have been identified, and this is identified by our maintenance supervisors and staff is incident response. It's kind of been number one. It keeps our crews off of the roadway. Uh, incident response any time of day. We have uh, our contractors developed a real good relationship, relationship with DPS. So DPS know, you know, if they need traffic control assistance on a major accident or they decide they need some assistance with anything, they're calling uh, our contractor. He's notifying us that he's been called out and we're taking care of the issue. Reduction in time spent on the interstate for one. And, and it, that's twofold from the safety aspect of, you know, the interstate is, is just dangerous work compared to some of the other areas that we do work, but also Anecdotally, maintenance crews and the counties were probably spending a third to, you know, half of their time um, doing work on the interstate. And now we're able to refocus a lot of that time on a lot of our FM roads and uh, state highways that we have in our counties. And so we, we definitely, I mean, something I would like to look at a little bit later is uh, to see how uh, surrounding roadway scores maybe have improved because of the extra attention we can now give those over the last few years. So, 
Uh, faster response on guardrail and cable barrier repairs. This is another one noticed by maintenance supervisors. It's, it's uh, the way it should be. You know, cable barriers repaired in a few days. Uh, additional capability for weather response, just the extra crews that are available really helps. And then the uh, advent of additional work. And I'm talking about additional work. This is some of the change orders that we've tacked onto this contract uh, for additional work related to the interstate. So we've had some requests for some large sign installations and, <laughs> and, and different things. And so it's really been a benefit to us there. Um, some of the issues, we've had some issues with the sign assessments based on retroflectivity, not really capturing signs that were failing for other reasons, uh, variable cost in third party claims. We've had to work through some issues with striping replacement, contract responsible to re replace one third of all markings each year. And we've had to figure out how best to do that. Uh, construction, responsibility during construction, just working through who's going to be responsible for the roadway once, a co once an, another contractor is building, rebuilding the road. And then we're supposed to give them access to HCRS. And we've had some issues getting our contractor to access. So we've had to make sure we keep up with that. So, and that's the end of my portion. <laughs> Thank you. So if you have any specific questions, you've got to talk to Joe, but does anyone have any other questions for Andrew? All right, Tony's up next. Uh, Tony's the Director of Maintenance for the Waco District. He received a BS in Civil Engineering from Texas A&M University in August of 91 and earned his PE license in August of 97. He has worked for TxDOT for 25 years, starting in April 92 in the Tyler District as an Engineering Assistant in the Advanced Planning Section and became Assistant Area Engineer in 99 and transferred to the Waco District in the same position. Uh, he served as Assistant Area Engineer for two area offices until being selected as Area Engineer in 2006 and served in that position until selected as the Director of Maintenance for the Waco District in September of uh, 2011. He lives in Waco with his wife and has two children. Daughter is a recent graduate of the University of North Texas and son is a sophomore at the University of Texas at Dallas. Tony? Well, I don't have any slides today and you all get a gold star for staying here. Wow, I got 10 whole minutes. <laughs> no, uh, I, I know I'm the, I'm the, I'm the pre pre presenter that you've been waiting for all day, the last one. I'm the only one between y'all and whatever beverage you're going to have at happy hour, so I will make this very brief. There's no reason for me to go through our contract in Waco, our current contract, because it's the same as the Bryan District. There's a few number differences as far as quantities, but as far as the contract itself, it was led about the same time under the same new spec, so it's really handled the same way that, that Andrew talked about. So I was going to kind of go over just real brief uh, history in Waco. You know, we've been doing total maintenance contracts, as we call them then. Uh, I think since 99 was the first one they did. So working on 20 years ago uh, was when they did their first total maintenance contract along I-35 in the Waco district. Uh, I think we're on about our fourth uh, iteration of that, and we let that, our, our current one was let a year ago. We're, we've just finished our first year. It's a three-year contract. Uh, it's also with Roy Jorgensen. Uh, DBI is their subcontractor doing the work for them, um, but Roy Jorgensen is our contractor, uh, same as the Bryan District. Um, our current contracts, uh, like I said, it's three years, it's about $21 million. So, you know, from that standpoint, it's not cheap to do this kind of work, and that's one thing, you know, that Waco's uh, kind of had to deal with, you know, because when you, uh, you start taking money on out of your contract budget to do total maintenance, it takes away from all the other contracts you can do. So you do have to manage that a little bit. Uh, I do know from the Waco standpoint, we look at it as uh, similar to what uh, Andrew's talking about and Brian, you know, we don't have to put our guys out on I-35. And I-35 is probably similar to what he has to deal with over there. You don't want to have guys out on I-35 if you don't have to because uh, there's a lot of traffic, there's a lot of truck traffic, and there's a lot of crashes, and people don't drive the speed limit at 75, and they don't drive that. So uh, we, we, we have a lot of issues with that. Um, one thing that is a real benefit for us, I believe, uh, in having a total maintenance contract that we that we have there is is basically incident response. Uh, you know, when we have a crash or something like that, requires lane closures or hazardous material cleanup, that kind of thing. You know, DBI is right on is on the on the ball on that, and they get out there really quick. 
uh, they can shut that lane down pretty quickly and, and start getting traffic off the road. And uh, again, we don't have to put our guys out there. Uh, similar to Brian, you know, we also have uh, the winter weather uh, is a big benefit to us too. Uh, we don't have to have the, the extra trucks and crews out on I-35 uh, putting the snow and ice material out there. Uh, DBI is uh, providing that for us. Uh, Jorgensen's providing for us, DBI is providing for us. I'll interchange those two. Uh, just, just know that officially it's Jorgensen, but DBI is who we deal with every day. Um, again, they, they are required, and we pay them uh, a winter weather uh, maintenance fee similar to what the Bryan District does. Uh, we, we pay them that uh, to have them ready to go at a moment's notice, and we, we kind of do the call out similar to what Brian does. Um, the, uh, the one thing that I, that I do want to talk about, some of the, the successes that we've had, uh, uh, our biggest success is, is, is that our contractor does a really good job of just keeping the roadway up. Uh, not the, I'm not talking about the pavement itself, but, and they do okay on that too, but I'm not dogging them on that. But, uh, but as far as the roadside and the litter and that kind of thing, you know, it's, it's, it's really nice to drive up and down 35, and it's, for the most part, all of the debris is picked up, uh, the litter's picked up. Uh, they're doing, this new contract has a new way of doing the mowing where we just have a, a height spec. Uh, so we don't have to, we don't have to really get on them about mowing because when we do the monthly assessments like Brian does, you know, if the mowing exceeds a certain height, they get penalized for it. So they're doing a real good job of keeping the, keeping the roadside looking good. And, and as you all know, if your roadside looks good, the public most of the time thinks it looks good until they hit the pothole. But if they hit the pothole, then we call them out there and they usually get out there pretty quickly on that. Um, as far as challenges go, you know, I was going to touch a little bit on that. You know, we do have some challenges uh, with the new spec. Similar to what Brian does, you know, there's a there's an amount of of uh, we have some quantities in there for pavement repairs, and uh, Mike Anderson in the maintenance district or the maintenance division when uh, when we did this spec, he and I had a little discussion about this, and we, we see where it ended up. But anyway, uh, you know, we had to we had to come up with a quantity of what we thought we were going to do for pavement repairs. Well, I-35 portions of it are brand new, but there's portions of it pretty old. And so it's falling apart in Waco pretty much. And so how do you put a number on that? And then uh, last year, in our first year, you know, we put a number on that, and uh, we, we got to that number pretty quickly. So then, uh, then it becomes a budget issue because you're having to find money to pay for all those pavement repairs. And, you know, the contractor's ready to do the work, and they want to do the work. And, you know, we're getting down to the end of the year, and we're trying to find money to fix the road, and we got to fix the road. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a hard thing. So I was begging for money last year from the maintenance division. I was bugging the crap out of Mike Anderson and them. I'm sure they got tired of hearing me. But, uh, and last year we also, it was our fault. We ran into a little issue when you have a new contract. We hadn't done one in so long. I think it had been five or six years since we'd done our, our previous contract. We forgot all about mobilization. And so that first year, that first year, uh, there's a big mobilization chunk that comes out of that first year too. And if you don't really put that in your budget, it kind of hurts sometimes. So uh, they didn't have too much uh, sympathy for me on that from the maintenance division, but uh, we made it through. We got, we got through just fine. Um, I don't know if I don't want to just keep rambling on for another five minutes. I could, um, or if we want to have time for a couple of questions. If y'all have some specific questions, I think that'd probably be better. That'd be a better time. <laughs> sir. I think Lance has a specific question for Andrew. Now, anyway, I, like I said, I can talk some more, but our 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 our, our project is just like their project over in Bryan. Uh, it's going really well. Uh, we're we're working through the little differences we have. Uh, it's up for renewal in, in a couple of years, and, and we'll have to look at it then as far as uh, it is it is set up to renew in three years if we want it to, additional three years. Uh, at that time, we'll, we'll assess it and see what uh, see what we want to do there. Maybe we want to tweak a few things. Depends on what the Mike will let me do then. Of course, Mike, I don't know, you, you might not be involved in it then, right? You think, you think you'll be out of Austin by then? <laughs> anyway, if y'all have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Uh, the question was, did you also have a three-person assessment team? I was going to do that. I just want to let you know. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, our assessment team uh, really consists, well, we, I will tell you that one thing I was going to tell you, the Waco District doesn't do it like Brian. Uh, they have an area office running their contract. Our contract is run out of the maintenance office at the district, and we have a contract inspector, project manager type guy that, that runs around with them. And we actually have two inspectors now. Uh, we added a new one when we got this contract going. Uh, the assessment is done by that project inspector or project manager, and then typically the uh, contractor will ride with him 
but we'll have both of our inspectors and, and probably somebody from the contract. We do not have a three-person team like they have, but we have the same, we use the same form, same, same everything is, uh, is done that, that way though. So, I hope I answered your question. So what do you like and not like about doing a total maintenance contract? What do I like and not like about using total maintenance contract? What I like is we don't have to put our people out there. Uh, and of course, since 1999, we probably have lost some maintenance guys in the sections and some of our maintenance uh, sections have reduced along those. There's three counties in I-35 and Waco that are affected by this contract. Um, and so those numbers have dwindled a little bit in those sections. So we don't have the guys. If we had to right now, I don't know that we could really do a good job of maintaining 35 and do the rest of the roads, similar to what Andrew said. Uh, but uh, so that's what I like about it mainly is that we don't have to put our guys out there. We don't have the, the, the FTEs or the personnel to put out there. Uh, what I dislike about it um, is having to pay for it because it's it's uh, it's not cheap. I mean, it's more expensive. Uh, in my opinion, it's more expensive than doing it in-house. We could probably do it cheaper, but uh, we'd have to. Well, I say we could do it cheaper for the work, but then you'd have the personnel cost. So maybe it, it may all work out. And Lance has asked me the same, asked the same question. Of Andrew. <laughs> uh, much the same response. Um, I guess what, our, our use of. The, the contract, it, it, it saves our guys uh, from being out on, on the interstate, but I guess the biggest concern would be the, you know, the cost. And then, um, you know, if we go back to trying to maintain the interstate ourselves again, over time, you know, we've lost some people that are familiar with, with uh, working in traffic at that high speed and, and of that uh, density. And uh, there would just be a, a little bit of a learning curve to work on the interstate again. Um, not that the work is any different, it's just a different environment. I also think incident response is a big thing too, is that we, you know, they, they have a quick response. Uh, I don't know if it, I, I would say it'd be quicker than what we would probably be able to call guys in and get them out there just because they have guys kind of on call more than, more than we do. So I think that's a, that's also a benefit. So Tony, Andrew, I think it would be important <coughs> for the audience to understand that if you did as just maintain payment, the cost of that contract would be considerably more. So when you put pavement maintenance in that contract, mm -hmm. you're going to pay for it considerably. My response to you is the same as it was a year ago, right. that our yearly cost has not gone up on our contract. Okay. So. It, it might. You might. You might be right. The success of it is not <laughs> right, and it is more. It is more of a battle. If you don't have items set up in there, then you are kind of fighting with the contractor all the time as what's pavement maintenance and what's not pavement maintenance. So right. you have Those that. The specification of how to include as much pavement maintenance in there that you, as a district, would like to have. Yes, you are correct, sir. <laughs> Somebody else have a question back there. The question was, was the contractor able to do this work with more or less resources than the state would? I don't know if I can answer that question for the contractor, but, uh, you know, I would think if the contractor has those guys out there to do that work only, then he's more specialized in just that sense. I'm not saying about the skill of the guys or anything like that, but uh, you know we have guys that that would be maintaining other roads also. And in, in my view, when I when I have a contract with a contractor for 35, then his guys work on 35. Now the contractor may have other contracts working that he's got guys on somewhere else, but when I call him, I expect him to be on I-35. So from my standpoint, he should be able to respond quicker and do that maybe with a little bit less resources in the sense that he should have guys specialized and ready to go. I don't know that I can fully answer that question, you know, for the contractor, but in my view, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a big difference, but uh, it just, uh, it doesn't have our guys out there, mainly from a risk standpoint. A lot of it is, is I think as somebody said earlier in one of the other earlier presentations of a, you know, we put that, that risk on the contractor and let him, let him handle that for us. So you gonna wave the sign at me? <laughs> <laughs> 